right, you're live. All right, thank you everyone for joining us today for the discussion about using Vagrant in your test and dev environments. So I don't like a lot of slideware. I'm actually gonna just have a couple slides and then we'll go straight into a live demonstration. Okay, so typically Cody does this presentation with me, so just left his name up there for perpetuity. All right, so what is Vagrant? It's a dev and test development tool that was created by Mitchell Hashimoto. It helps you provision dev and test environments that are consistent with production. Now, why is this necessary in the first place? Developers aren't necessarily the most IT infrastructure savvy people in the world. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're very intelligent, very smart guys. But uh, when it comes to, okay, let's deploy CentOS, let's deploy Red Hat, let's make sure we have all of the hardening in place, they're more likely to just get something that's easy to deploy on their laptop, or they may just install Homebrew on their Mac OS laptop and then just do their development that way. So when it's time to commit code, then you might have problems with incompatibilities with the developer's desktop and what's actually running in production. So Mitchell is a super smart guy. He saw that there's this problem. He uh, is a developer himself. So he said, how can I make my development environment the same as my production environment? I know, let me create a small VM, hopefully automatic, automatically. And that way I can run the same provisioning scripts that my IT ops people are running in production on that VM and I can develop against that VM. So that's why we use Vagrant. It's quick, it's easy to replicate production on your dev box. So the only question is, how do I get started? Okay, so first of all, we wanna select what our provider will be. Now, we're at VMworld, so we're gonna forget that first board item on the page. We're gonna actually talk about the second board item, which is VMware Fusion or Workstation. So either one of these platforms, if you have your dev laptop, a lot of developers are Mac guys, so they can run VMware Fusion. You can actually get the plugin for VMware technologies from Mitchell's website, vagrantup.com. At the end of my presentation, I'll have a discount code that you can use to get 10% off of the plugin between now and September 7th. And if you stick around to the end of the presentation and you're here live, you may actually have the opportunity to get one free. And then you can build your own. Uh, Mitchell believes in you know, open source coding. He has the source for Vagrant open source on GitHub. Anyone can go out, download it, and actually develop their own plugins against it. So there are currently plugins for Amazon Web Services, Rackspace, uh, DigitalOcean even. So, and there's also an open source one for ESXi. So the bottom line is pretty much whatever environment you work with, Vagrant will help you get your dev and test environment up quickly. Okay, so the next step is install Vagrant. It's as simple as going to downloads.vagrantup.com and running the installation uh, there. And then the next step is download a box file. Now a box is, you can think of it as an OVF. And all of you VMware gurus out there, you'll understand what an OVF is. But just in case you don't understand what that is, it's essentially a pre-packaged VM. It will have VMware tools installed and running. Vagrant uses shared folders to move configuration files to your VM. So that shared folders functionality is actually pretty important. Now, you're not just limited to the box files that are available publicly, you can make your own. Uh, Mitchell has uh, free instructions on how to create your own box files. Now, if you want to use box files that have been created by others, the majority of them out there are for VirtualBox since that was the first platform that Vagrant supported. But there's a growing VMware uh, community within the Vagrant space, and we're hoping that we can get some more of you guys out there and familiar with Vagrant because we all need to get a little bit of DevOps uh, knowledge out there in, in the, the next version of uh, data centers that are being deployed. So you can go to that website, uh, www.vagrantbox.es, and actually show you what the site looks like. You can actually see the list of the files that are there. I did a search from VMware, so you can see all of the VMware compatible box files that are out there. And it's just a matter of downloading the file, moving it to your Vagrant space. Okay, so step four, pretty easy. You move to, you create a directory, 
uh, move to it and then do vagrant init. You edit the vagrant file that's created and I'll show you in a little bit. And then you do vagrant up. All of a sudden you have your development environment up and running. And last but not least, you SSH to your VM that's created and then you're able to do whatever development work you need to do. And then you success. You have a development VM, you have V-inception going, you have your development VM within your development VM. Okay, so let's go to the live demonstration. Okay, this might be a little bit small. Is that okay or do I need to increase the size? Let me see if I can increase the size here. Yeah, if you can increase the size, it's probably better. All right. Um, All right, I'm going to actually let's see options and then let's change the global options or the session options. Sorry about the delay folks. We'll be back with you shortly. Okay, it'll be a little hard to see, but I'm going to have to go with what's here. Hmm. Oh, here we go. All right. Let's change the size. Okay, much better. Much, 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 much better. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for the delay, folks. Let me just uh, make sure I'm in the right directory. I'm going to show you what's actually in this Vagrant file that's generated. So when you type out Vagrant init, I'm not going to run that command because I've already run it, but when you type out that command and hit enter, you get a file called Vagrant file that will contain all the instructions for generating your VM. And if you'd like to see what's in here, here's the source code. Oh, here we go. Uh, zoom. Okay, so here's the content of that file where we'll have um, this code, it'll say configure to, is that too small? Okay, configure to, that means use the version two uh, syntax of Vagrant. We'll also see config.vm.box, that tells you which box file to use, which is precise 64. Now if that, if that box definition didn't exist, it would go to that box underscore URL and download the file that I need for my environment. Let me just bring that up one more size. Okay. So, if I want to see the list of boxes on my system, I just do vagrant box list. And I'll see that I have a precise 64 box for VirtualBox and a precise 64 box for VMware Workstation. And for those of you who are not uh, as familiar with Linux, precise uh, is uh, the code name for Ubuntu's 12 release. So I'll go ahead and now that I see the code, it's not much to it, I'll go ahead and do Vagrant up. And since I'm using VMware's uh, plugin, I'll have to put in this right here. If you're working on a Mac, it would be VMware underscore Fusion. All right, so it's gonna go to the directory where all the box files are stored. It's going to copy it to my local directory in a hidden directory called dot vagrant. It's going to configure it according to whatever settings I have in my vagrant file. And by the time I'm done rambling, we'll have a fully functioning VM and I can go ahead and do whatever work I need to do. Now let's play the Jeopardy music as it's coming up. All right. so. That last line here, you can see that the current directory, which is where we're at, is going to be shared as slash vagrant in that VM. So it's not as important for a single VM, but if you have a multi-VM setup, like I'm about to show you in a few minutes, uh, then having that shared folder automatically is pretty useful. So to get into my uh, VM, I just do vagrant SSH, and I'm actually able to get into my VM. I can start doing whatever operations I need to do. So I'm actually going to go into a more complicated setup. 
And let's vagrant up this guy. So this is actually going to create uh, two VMs for me. I'll show you the source code for it while that's going. So I have two different, different definitions of VMs in this single Vagrant file. And really, the Vagrant file can be as large as you want it to be. If you want like uh, eight VMs, like let's say you're going to experiment with the, you know, OpenStack or something like that, you can actually have those VMs automatically generated uh, by listing them one by one in your Vagrant file. So the first one is named controller. It's going to be the controller for my cloud stack. And then I have a next one called compute, which is going to be you know, the hypervisor uh, you know, running workloads for my cloud environment. OK, so the first VM is up and running already. We can see the healthy status over here. The second one is still coming up. Now, this is all great. I'm able to bring up my VMs. What about the automated aspect? If I just bring up the VMs, I have to go ahead and run a bunch of commands, and I still have to do the hardening. Now, what uh, Vagrant allows, in addition, is you can do shell provisioning. You can run shell scripts automatically. It'll do puppet provisioning. It can do chef provisioning. So any of your traditional DevOps tools, including Ansible, was just added recently. You'll be able to leverage to automatically uh, configure your VMs according to whatever standards you want. And I'm about to show that to you right now. OK, so let's go into the controller. And let's say I wanted to run Lynx, which is a text-based web browser. Now, my machine doesn't necessarily have it, but let's say I wanted to automatically have that VM come up with that command. So I'll exit out of that, and I'll go into the Vagrant file. OK. So I'll add this line that says controller.vm.provision. And I believe the code is puppet. Yeah, control, controller.vm.provision, space, puppet. So I'll have to do a reload command for it to go ahead and execute that code. So it's actually going to take my VM, it's going to shut it down, it's going to take notice of the puppet manifest that I have in there, and it's going to install the package that I need to run. Now uh, let's take a look at the package itself. If you haven't looked at puppet code, it's very simple to follow along. This is the actual command that's going to be executed. It's very simple. Let me uh, see if I can get that a little bit bigger. The command is actually pretty simple, and it doesn't do a lot. It's just going to install that Lynx package that I wanted to work with. But if you had something more complicated like uh, this, for example, this is an OpenStack uh, compute module that can be set up automatically using similar steps with Vagrant. So let's say you want to automatically provision a cloud stack of um, nodes, you can actually use Puppet's code that they have out there on github.com, and you can uh, have a fully functioning system that way. My system is a little bit simpler. It's just going to add that links module, and then you'll be able to browse the web. So let me go into that VM. If I have a multi-VM setup, I have to actually specify the name of the VM that I'm going into. Now if I type in links, you'll see that the web browser is there, and before it wasn't. So it's a simple example, but that just shows you the power that Vagrant can have. You can have your entire dev set up within minutes in an automated fashion. And I'm just going to show you one last example before I wrap things up here. OK, so this is an example of a Vagrant file that allows you to do multiple VMs in a dynamic fashion. And this is code that was written by Cody Bunch. It's really cool stuff. And it involves a little bit of the Ruby functionalities that are supported in Vagrant, because it is written in Ruby. So up top, Cody uh, specifies um, a hash of values. Uh, first, there's the node name, 
as well as the number of nodes that he wants to create of that particular type, and then the last octet of the IP address. So it's going to take, the Vega file is going to take that information and automatically generate the VMs. So first of all, again, we have the code for which box I'm going to use. If I can't find the box on the system, I'm going to do the you know, download of the actual URL, and then I'm going to go into this um, regular for each uh, loop that Cody wrote down here. It's going to take the host name, which is going to take that uh, node list, and actually make the host name based on the node uh, value. So the first one is Nova. It's going to make Nova-01. It's going to be incrementing with this I value. I know this all looks complicated, but I trust me, it's very simple. And um, then it's going to tack on this uh, IP address, the fourth octet out here. So he's going to have this IP address 178.16.172.200. And then the VMs will come up with those values and you'll be able to communicate that way. Again, not that important for a single VM setup, but if you have a multi-VM setup, you can deterministically bring up your environments with IP addresses, with the packages you need. Okay, so that'll be it for now. Before I wrap up, I just want to put the code out there for the discount purchase of the Vagrant license. So I'll go ahead and zoom this out. Okay, so for the viewers at home and for the people here live, you can actually get 10% off of the VMware plugin if you go to www.vagrantup.com and use this discount code. I also have free giveaways, so if anybody is sitting on the audience wants to have a license for either the VMware uh, Fusion version or the VMware Workstation version of the plugin, see me after the talk and I'll go ahead and give you that license. All right, thank you guys for the time.